I welcome you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is the voice of God coming to you live through Prophetess Egbe Jane. And in this channel, we share the undiluted Word of God to help us live a better Christian life as children of God. And today we are going to dive into a very, very important topic which I want you to stay tuned, watch this video from the beginning to the end so that you will hear the things we are going to be discussing here today. It is very important that you watch this video to the end so that you will not get half-baked information, you will get the full details and then you will be blessed and do well to follow our page, do well to like this video, to subscribe and to follow us to get more edifying content. Without wasting time, let's go straight into the topic we have to talk about today. We are going to be looking at unbiblical practice in the body of Christ. Does this sound familiar to you? Unbiblical practice in the body of Christ. There are a lot of things we are seeing today in the body of Christ that even me to sometimes as one that is called, I'll be wondering where are all these doctrines practices, beliefs, where are they coming from? Where, what is the foundation of this kind of teaching or this kind of practices in the body of Christ? I get marveled and sometimes I'm even confused where all these things are actually coming from because they are actually negating the word of God. They are against the word of God. They don't have their basics or their foundation on the word of God. And the word of God is the basic, is the foundation for us as believers, as Christians, that we are, that believe in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, that came to die, to save and to redeem the whole world. He gave us his word as a manual, as a guide. But it is so unfortunate that many believers in the church today don't read their Bibles. They don't like to read their Bibles. Some have dropped their Bibles in the shelf, covered up with dust. Some use their Bible to now become their pillowcase. They put it as their pillow to sleep and all manner of practices, but they don't give out time. Some even prefer to watch movies all through the day to the night, but they cannot open their Bibles to read it. And because they don't read their Bibles, they don't know what the Word of God says concerning situations in their lives when they are in challenge. And that is why many have fallen victims of some of these practices I'm going to be mentioning here. I'm going to, there are so many of them, but I'm going to narrow it down to nine unbiblical practices that we see today in the body of Christ. And I will not want you to watch this video halfway. Stay put, watch this video from the beginning to the end so that you will know and you will not fall victim as a child of God, as a Christian. Because in this end time, even some Christians, some believers that are spiritual are still falling victims of some of the things I will be mentioning here. And that is why I wouldn't want you to just watch halfway and leave it. No, watch it from the beginning to the end. So that you will hear all the necessary points, all the necessary things we are going to be exposing in this video. So that you don't fall victim of it. And if already you have been a victim of it, well, you have the opportunity to make a U-turn. Okay. And then if you have been hurt through some of the things, the point I'm going to be mentioning here, find a place in your heart to forgive it and see it as one of the things that happen in life. Let it go and then move on with your life. Now, straight to the subject we are talking about, unbiblical practices in the body of Christ. What is unbiblical practice? Unbiblical practice is any belief, behavior, tradition within Christianity that contradicts or deviate from the teachings and principles found in the Bible. It deviates from the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. It deviates from the teachings of scriptures, what the Bible says. And today, we have a lot of them. Unfounded doctrines. I don't know where they, they manufacture them from. Unfounded practices. Some have called themselves 
that they are the authorities now. They know the word of God so much. They can interpret the word of God. They can even tell you the day that Jesus is going to come again. They will tell you rapture day. Please, anybody that is telling you, uh, Jesus appeared to me. He is coming on the 24th of November. So, so don't believe such. It is false. It is not true. Because the Bible says, no man knows the day, the hour, the time where our Savior shall return. Nobody knows it. So let nobody deceive you. And you are being deceived because you don't read your Bible. Today, if they are to share gifts, maybe of an iPhone and a Bible, many believers inside church, they will prefer to pick an iPhone than to receive the word of God, which is the Bible. And I'm going to be exposing some of those things to you so that you learn it. Unbiblical practices are any belief, behaviors, traditions within Christianity that contradicts or deviates from the teachings and principles found in the Bible. And these practices may arise from cultural influence, human traditions, or misinterpretations of scriptures. Today, a lot of people that called themselves men of God, pastors, prophets, apostles, are just practicing some very strange things that we never saw all through scriptures. Very, very strange things. And we are going to be looking at some of those practices that comes as a result of traditional influence, that's how it came in, some came as a result of cultural influence, and some has also come as a result of misinterpretation of scriptures, misinterpretation of the word of God. Some interpret it to suit them. I know that funny enough, the Bible, anything you are looking for, you must find a scripture in the Bible that talks something about it. And so these scriptures sometimes are misinterpreted and they teach it to people and people are going about with wrong, wrong doctrines and, and they're not finding it to believe the word of God. They are not finding it difficult to believe when they see the truth. They can no longer differentiate between the truth and which one is falsehood. It's so difficult and so complicated. So we are going to be looking at some of those practices that are commonly seen in so many denominations under the umbrella of the body of Christ. We see a lot of strange practices that are not founded in the word of God. They are not word based, they are not scriptural, but they are being practiced. And you see thousands of people following, practicing it, doing them. Number one, we are going to be looking at I'm just going to give us some of the common unbiblical practices that we see. They are so common around these days. Number one is eating grass or sand. <laughs> or other things in the name of seeking answers or looking for solutions to your problems. Eating grass is unbiblical. There is no part of the scripture, nowhere in the Bible, where we were encouraged to eat grass. Because when you eat grass, Jesus is taking you to greener pasture, so feed on eat this grass like cattle, like animals. It is unfounded. It's not scriptural. Don't do it. Don't practice it. Don't believe it. It is falsehood. It is not based on the word of God. There is no part in the scripture from Genesis to Revelation where I saw when Jesus told his disciples or, 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 or told them to go and eat grass. No. When there were provisions, he made provisions available. He gave them manna to eat. He didn't ask them to eat grass. And even when there was need, let's see the scripture. In Mark chapter 6 verse 41. If you see Mark, take your time and read the scriptures very well. Mark 6 41. Matthew 14, 17 to 19. Explains what happened when there was need. When Jesus was preaching, the great multitude followed him. And he observed that after talking with them for a very long time, he said these people will be hungry, they need food to eat. Now they have eaten spiritual meal. They will need a physical meal to eat. And he asked, is there anything that we can give these people to eat? And his disciples said, yes. There's a young boy here that has five loaves of bread and two fishes. Jesus would have asked them, everybody go out and start eating grass. But he didn't do that. He made provision. 
provided you see multiplying the five loaves of bread and two fishes to feed to feed five thousand and they had leftovers so do not be deceived in this end time that we are you go to a place and they tell you it's grass pack sand and begin to eat it is dangerous and risky to your health it is toxic to your health don't do it don't allow anybody that calls themselves pastors prophets apostles or whatever name we have a lot of fakes now and of course when there's original they'll always be fake the originals are there but the fakes are more than the original now in this 21st century everybody wants to cash out yes people want to cash out so they are coming up with different strange strange doctrines beliefs things you don't i don't even know where they get them from and some we even tell you that god told them please be careful be careful. The only scripture that talks about a human being eating grass was in Daniel chapter 4, verse 33 to 34. Nebuchadnezzar was driven from men and did eat grass as ox. That was the case of Nebuchadnezzar. Go and read it. It's in Daniel chapter 4, verse 33 to 34. Explaining when Nebuchadnezzar the king became so proud and full of himself and said i am everything accruing the glory the honor to himself and for god to teach him a lesson god pushed him down to the bush and made him to eat grass that was a punishment to humiliate him to return him back to his senses to know that there is a god that is above there is a god that sits and controls the affairs of men that was the only scripture where human being ate grass. It was a punishment that was given to Nebuchadnezzar because of his pride and arrogance. So don't mistake it, don't misinterpret it, and then you go to a place, they're asking you to eat grass, you go and start, enter bush and begin to eat grass. Those grasses can be poisonous, it can lead to your death, it can lead to complications in your health system. Please don't do it. Number two, Drinking fuel, fuel or kerosene or other harmful substances to your health in the name of solution. Hmm. Things are happening though. Know. Don't be a victim, be wise. Watch this video to the end and get the full message. Asking you to drink fuel. As for what? Where is it found in the Bible that Jesus gave his disciples fuel to drink? And you say you are looking for solution. Ah, I'm looking for solution. Anything they say I should do, I will do it. Anything they say I should drink, I will drink. All manner of concussion that you don't know. That will later cause a lot of problems to you. Be careful. We are in the end times. Be careful. We are in the end times. Somebody asking you to drink fuel. Imagine fuel as toxic as it is. You put it in your mouth to drink. You carry kerosene. You drink and other harmful substances that you don't even know. You are busy drinking because you are looking for solution. My brothers, my sisters, be wise. Be wise. We are in the last days. So many things are happening. Many falsehood, false doctrines that are unscriptural, that don't have basics, they are, they are contradicting with the word of God. Don't join, don't be a victim. Now let's see, the only place in scriptures that Jesus performed the miracle was the wedding at Cana. John chapter 2, if you read verse 1 to 11, the wedding at Cana. Jesus turned water to wine, not to kerosene, not to fuel, not to other substance. <laughs> Children of God, read your Bible so that they will not mislead you all, so that you, you will not go and drink kerosene, drink fuel in the name of you are looking for solution. In the name that is what will wash fiber away, that is what will cleanse your womb, that is what will cleanse your system. Don't be deceived. We have a lot of falsehood everywhere. It is not scriptural. Jesus loves you so much. He cannot tell you to take something that is toxic, something that will be harmful and dangerous to your health. 
He loves you so much to do that. He can do that. The Bible says his thoughts towards you and me is the thoughts of good and not of evil. To give us a hope and a future and to bring us to an expected end. That is the thought he has towards you. So Jesus cannot ask you that you should go and drink fuel or kerosene. And the man of you believes so much and say he said it that God told him. Maybe he heard it from his mind or it's on a delusion and comes to tell you that God said you should drink fuel, you should drink kerosene. Please don't do it. There are common practices we are seeing these days in the body of Christ. They are unfounded. It is not scriptural and don't practice it, please. The only time Jesus did a miracle of turning something, a substance, he turned it to wine that is, that is healthy, that cannot cause damage to a human being. He didn't turn it to kerosene. He didn't turn it to harmful substance. Therefore, be wise. Number three, batting with detergents or with animal blood or any other water for your sins to be washed away is not biblical. It is not scriptural. It is not in the word of God. These are practices we see in our times today. They ask you, buy homo and bring to church. And then they are pouring the omo on you and pouring water that they are washing your sins away. There is nothing that can wash the sins of humanity away other than the blood of Jesus that I was paid 2,000 years ago. His blood, he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary to wash your sins. So hear me, my brother, my sister. There is no detergent that, that is potent enough to wash sins. No. There is no company in this world that can create a detergent that can wash away your sins. Your sins, remember, is not physical. It's not like a makeup that you want to wash off. No. The sins we are talking is spiritual. Nobody should tell you, bring by a goat, we will kill the ram, and then use the blood to wash you so that you will be cleansed. All because you are looking for solution. Please, I repeat, be careful. So that you don't end up roping yourself into things that you cannot come out from or that you cannot explain. They are not scriptural. Note, it is only the blood of Jesus that can wash our sins away. According to 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 to 9, Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. It is only the blood of Jesus, I repeat, only the blood no detergent, no blood of any animal can wash away your sins. It happens in those days in the Old Testament before, before Christ came and died. And that era has passed. We are in the era of Christ where he came and died. He has paid the price already with his blood. So nobody should deceive you except you decide to make yourself vulnerable. Number four, there is this common issue right now in the body of Christ that is almost everywhere called spiritual husband <laughs> is everywhere now a lot of people come to me for counseling uh, mama I went to this place they told me I have spiritual I said you don't have any spiritual husband be careful I am not saying spiritual husband is not is not real it is real but it is not all cases that are attached to spiritual husband. A sister is up to 30, 35, she's not yet married. Anywhere she goes, they tell you, you have spiritual husband. You have spiritual husband. And then, unfortunately, what is happening right now? They will not tell you, for you to be delivered from that spiritual husband, I have to do a deliverance with, for you, and that deliverance is that I have to sleep with you for the spiritual husband to go away. Deception, it is not scriptural. If you meet a genuine man and woman of God, and you have a spiritual husband, they will pray and command that spirit out in the name of Jesus. That is the right thing to do. Any man of God that is asking you that he has to sleep with you as a form of deliverance he is fake. He is false. Because the practice, what he's practicing is committing adultery or fornication. Some even married women fall victims of this. He will tell you, ah, why your husband's business is not working? Why things are not working in your home? It's because there's a spiritual husband. That will not allow your husband to prosper. That will not allow him to suck. If there is a spiritual husband, what did Jesus do when he met those that were possessed? He commanded the spirit out of them. So why are you not sleeping with people's wives? Sleeping with sisters? 
in the name of you want to deliver them from spiritual husband. Shame on you. You are a disgrace to the body of Christ. And it is ministers of this nature, these false ministers that are making evangelism very, very difficult. When you go out for evangelism, people will tell you, ah, no, 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 please, go with this or message or all these fake, fake pastors and prophets all over the place. You people will come and the next thing, you will come and do this to me, you come and do that to me. You hear a lot of things. And people are now running away from giving their life to Christ. They don't even want to hear the message you want to preach. Why? Because of the falsehood that has infiltrated the body of Christ. Don't be a victim. Any instruction that introduces you to breaking and disobeying the word of God, it's fake, it's falsehood, it's not real. God cannot contradict himself. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not fornicate. God cannot, the solution God is giving to you is not a solution that will cause you to disobey, to break his word. It's not God. That is not God. The Bible commands us not to commit adultery and fornication. You can read Exodus, Exodus chapter 20. You read 14, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 14. Please take your time. Go through the scriptures and get it very well. Don't be deceived. We are in the end times. Things are happening. Some people are already victims of what I'm saying. So many women are victims of what I am saying already. Don't be a victim, please. Sleeping, number five, sleeping with you for your prayers to be answered fast. Say, ah, the only way this prayer can be answered sharp, sharp is that I have to sleep with you. That is not God. That is not God. Sleeping with people's wives in the name of prayer in hotels, please. Let's be careful. You know, I'm just surprised that these days, so many that said they are called of God, ministers, prefer to be, uh, to be doing prayers in the hotel. How can you, a genuine man of God, called of God, chosen of God, you will tell your sister to go and book a hotel for you to go and do prayer, and you end up sleeping with the sister. How do you even think that God will even hear that kind of prayer on the bed of our fornication or adultery. Examine yourself, man of God, woman of God. Examine yourself. Are you really called? Because some are not called. I knew how many years it took me before I answered the call. I didn't want to do the work. I was running away for years before I finally submitted myself to the call. How much more people that are not even called, they just, in fact, they are doing the ministry work, they employ themselves. Stomach infrastructure, looking for what to eat. And then they will tell you, I hear, I hear. What did you, you hear nothing. You are hearing your own self talking to you. So as a sister, if you are hearing my voice through this video, I beg you, don't allow any pastor to mess you up because he wants to pray for you. That pastor is false. God cannot answer that kind of prayers. He tells her, once I sleep with you, ah, immediately the prayer is answered. It's not true, it's not, it's not, it's not true, it's against, it's a violation, it's contradicting the word of God. So know it. God is the only one that answers prayers. Don't be deceived. It is God that has the power the final say in your prayers. No man can make a prayer to be sharp, sharp. Because a lot, of, especially women, women are always falling victims of what I'm saying. Most women are falling victims. Be careful. Be careful. Number six, that is commonly said. I've heard it so many times before I even started the work God called me to do. Some ministers have even said it to me. If you leave my church, you will die. If you leave my church, all the blessings that came to you, all of them will go. They will leave you. If you leave my church, it is in my church that uh, uh, God bless you with these children. If you leave my church, all the children will die. If you leave my church, that is witchcraft manipulation. It is not God. Hear me and hear me good, yes. It is witchcraft manipulation inside church. It is not God. It is not founded in the word of God. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord make it rich. 
it adds no sorrow. God cannot give you a gift. Even when we backslide or sometimes we sin against God, does he take his, his grace away from us? No. So how can a, a man of God tells you, if you leave my church, you will die. If you leave my church, you will never succeed. You will never prosper. It means his hands are not clean. It means he is diabolic. He is using other things. And maybe it's those things he's using that gave you those blessings. But if it is God that gave you those blessings, and you understand what the word of God says, you stand upon the word of God. Don't be in bondage. Christ has set us free. He has liberated us. So nobody should put you in bondage. Galatians chapter 5. And verse 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ had made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't allow any man of God to put you in bondage. Don't allow any woman of God to put you in bondage. Because it is common, you see it everywhere these days. Don't stay where you are being molested. Where you live in fear. All the time you are afraid. Huh? John chapter 8 verse 36 says he that Jesus has set free is free indeed Jesus has set you free no man of God should put you in bondage no man of God should enslave you and say the day you leave this church that is the end of your life that is witchcraft manipulation and so many have fallen victim of it I pray that the Lord will redeem you the Lord will deliver you in the name of Jesus and Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 says, The blessings of the Lord make it rich, and it adds no sorrows with it. Number seven, common practices, unbiblical practices in the body of Christ. Number seven was giving and selling good luck charm. I've heard that one. Sir, so, I have a special handkerchief that is a lucky charm. Or we have a, a magical object or magical ring, or magical something, a uh, beads. It is not biblical, that is witchcraft. That is idolatry inside the church. They are telling you, we will have a, a special good luck charm that we will give you as a businessman. Ah, you will be, your business will be booming. There is no basics of that in the word of God. There's nothing like good luck charm. Jesus should be your good luck charm. His oil of favor should be your good luck charm upon your life. Don't accept things that you don't know where they are coming from. You accept handkerchief and they tell you this handkerchief is 50,000 naira. Once you use this handkerchief to wipe your face, favor will be following you. Do you know what is inside the handkerchief when you are collecting? Some will give you beads to tie on your waist. Some will give you necklace, some hand bangles. Be careful, I repeat, be careful the things you are collecting up and down, putting on your body. And that's why some people cannot sleep at night. Those spirits that are attached to those objects in your home, they begin to visit you. Yes. Those spirits, because those things, some of them are coming from occultic temples and altars, shrines. They begin to visit your home. You begin to see strange things, hear strange sounds in your house. Because you attracted them by those things that you received. Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 20 to 21 says, Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against your magic charms with which you ensnare people. Because those lucky charms they give to you is to ensnare you, to enslave you. But you feel it is working, it is working. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8 and Revelation 18, 23. God is not a magician. God does not do the more you look, the less you see. No. God does not do the more you look, the less. He's not a magician. When you pray to God, wait for the answers to come. Thank him. Appreciate him. Celebrate him. Thank him for the blessings. Thank him for the increase. And then you will see your answers begin to manifest as testimonies to you. Do not go to where they will give you objects, things that you don't know where they are coming from. Let God be your lucky charm. Let Jesus pray. Father, I decree as I go to my business today, I will make sales. Let the angels of the Lord bring pool crowd, bring customers from the left, from the right to the center. Let them locate my shop. 
pray and decree, go out, it will be well with you. But don't go collecting things that you don't know where they are coming from. Be careful of spiritual materials that you buy and use. Why? Because some of those materials at the same time are coming from occultic temple and demonic shrines. This was a personal revelation that God told me. So some of these, now we have a lot of spiritual, everybody on social media, everybody is going spiritual. Do this one, buy this, uh, uh, this oil, this, uh, this soap. And then you are just buying, you don't even know where it is coming from. And the Lord warned me and told me that some of those things are actually, not all, I said some, are coming from occultic temples. Some of them are coming from witchcraft shrines. And you don't know, you go and buy it and invite trouble to your life. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Number eight, manipulating you to give out your property. Unbiblical, we're talking about unbiblical practices in the body of Christ. Right now, like I said at the beginning, most people that are in ministry, it's not everybody that is actually called to do this work. So many are in it because there is no job. So they employ themselves into ministry. Say, guy, come, let's go and start up a church. I'll be the pastor, you'll be the secretary, you'll be the treasurer to keep the money. And then they start ministry. They start ministry. And they want to cash out. They want to buy a car. They want to build houses. They want to own properties. And so they come and manipulate you with sweet words. Do as I say. They put in the mouth and do as I say. And when they tell you, I hear the voice telling me that you should bring your car to the church. Foolishly, because you don't read your Bible, you don't know the word of God. You go and carry the new car your husband bought for you as a wife and go and give, give to the pastor. You go and carry your house and donate. And then before you know, the pastor has 20, 50 houses, 50 plots of lands. And then you, you cannot even see food to eat. Be wise. Giving is good. Giving is scriptural. But don't be manipulated into giving. No. Don't allow anybody to manipulate you. To sweet talk you. To give your property, your land. So go and bring the land document. And something happened somewhere. That I went to minister one day, and after my ministration, the man of God came up and started uh, giving prophecies. And while he was giving prophecies, he saw this man and said, You, I saw the spirit of death upon your life. I saw the man say, I reject it in the name of Jesus. I reject it. It's not my portion. I reject it in the name of Jesus. And he said, The only way this spirit of death will leave you is for you to go and sell that only land you have and bring the money to the church. Can you beat that? If the spirit of death is following someone, as a man of God, what are you supposed to do as a prophet? Is it not to speak, you spirit, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Send that spirit away. And you are telling him that the only way he will not die is for him to go and sell that land. I come and give the money to you. Hmm. Let's be careful, I repeat. Be careful. There are a lot of practices, things that have been practiced that are not, are not word-based. So you need to be careful, really. You really, really need to be careful, okay? Give because you are led in your spirit to give, else you will not get any reward from that giving. Give because you are led. You, you are led in your heart to give. Because if you just go and carry your car and give, that's why some people are murmuring and grumbling down in the church. Say, I have given everything. I gave my car, gave my television, gave my gas cooker, gave everything. And yet, since I've been given for one year in this church, I've not seen anything as proof. Because you didn't give according to the word of God. You didn't give because you were led. You gave because you were manipulated to give. So be careful what you give. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 8 says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion for god loves a cheerful giver the scripture emphasizes it not under compulsion or duress or manipulation no for god loves a cheerful giver 
if you give, God will open ways for you. He will give you new ideas that will cause doors to be open for money to come. Your mind will become creative and active. There are, in fact, you must see results. That's the truth. If you give genuinely. But if you give, because the pastor says, if you give your house to me, uh, but before this month runs out, somebody will give you 10 million. You go and give your house. You'll be sleeping outside though. Ray will beat you, son will beat you very well. And God will still remain God on the throne. Hallelujah. Let's see number nine, which is the last. And this one is, is a very strong one that is causing a lot of catastrophe right now in the body of Christ. Be careful of prophecies because we have a lot of false prophecies everywhere. I am a prophetess. And I am saying it. Be careful of prophecy. Uh, prophecies have scattered families. Prophecies have scattered marriages. Prophecies have scattered, have destroyed a lot of things. Fake prophecy. Things that are not real. Things that are fabricated from their mind, the figment of their imagination. They just look at you and see you and begin to tell you things that are not true. If any prophecy is given to you, go and wait with the word of God. The Bible says, test of all spirits and know it they are of God. You should have the spirit as a child of what the spirit of discernment to be able to discern this voice. Is it of God? A prophet gives you a prophecy and tells you that your mother is a witch or your mother-in-law is a witch or that, that girl you want to marry, she is a witch or... Or that girl you want to marry, she will cause you setback. She will cause problem for you. You will never progress. Don't just take it hook, line, and sinker. Yes, I know you believe the man of God. You believe the woman of God. But there is need for you to take that prophecy back to God in prayers. If possible, confirm from another two prophets if that word is actually true. That is my advice. A sister once came to me, called me and said, Mama, please, oh, I'm having um, some issues. Oh. I said, what is it? He said, they gave me a message, a prophet, a prophecy that my mother-in-law is a witch, that she does not want me to have children. And I, I said, okay, let me pray about it and know if it is true. And I prayed. And God told me, that woman is innocent, though. And I told her, I said, this is your mother-in-law, she is innocent, oh, please love her, oh, buy things for her, oh. Don't follow what others are saying. She is not a witch. A lot of people have been accused of witchcraft. Meanwhile, they are innocent. Be careful the prophecy you receive from where you receive it from. Some are true, but some are also not true. So be careful. Be careful. There is a boy that went and tied his mother. And for three days, tied his mother. The woman would have died. If not that the sister quickly came with somebody to rescue the woman. Tied her because a prophet told her that the mother is a witch. That is why it's not progressing. They sucked him from the work. He's doing this, that, that. And the mother is a witch. The mother is responsible. And he went and tied the mother in an uncompleted beauty. That she would die. He wanted to kill the mother by all means. She should confess. Confess what? She must confess. But at the end of the day, only to discover that this, this person is a fake prophet. He's not even born again. He's not even a child of God in the first place. He was just doing it for stomach infrastructure. He was saying, ah, you know, there is no job. Oh, there is no job. Food now. I was hungry. I had to do something. Uh, I had to, some of them, some is from my mind. So misleading people into error. So people are just doing things because of the this prophet said it so some are actually very genuine but some are not so if there is any prophet that gives you any message please do well to pray about it and be sure of it before you start taking action and even if you want to take action the action you should take should not be physical the bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood the battle we are fighting is not a physical one it is a spiritual one so the, you should tell your, your prophets, I will bring my mother, I will bring the person for deliverance, so that you do deliverance. And not to tell you, keep away from them. Don't talk to them again, block their number, push them away. No, that's not the way of God. That is not the way of God. That is not the pattern of God. 
So any prophecy that, that scatters your family, brings deviation, brings confusion, you need to check it out. You need to really check it out. Let's see what the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, is to be put to death. These false prophets that are busy causing confusion in the body of Christ with prophecy, everybody wants to prophesy. Everybody wants to see. Even if you are not called into that office, you just want to see and prophesy. Why? Because everybody wants to hear. You want to hear something. You just want to hear. And that is why there is a lot of confusion everywhere. Jeremiah 14, 14. Then the Lord said to me, the prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false vision. The vision they are prophesying to you is false vision. Divish, divination, idolatries, and delusions of their minds. That's what they are prophesying to you. Delusions from their mind. God say, I am not the one. So be careful the prophecy you are receiving. Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 19. Please take your time to read the scriptures. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. Matthew 24 verse 24. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive. That's what Matthew 24 24 says. False messiahs and false prophets will appear, which is what we are experiencing. To deceive. They will perform great signs and wonders to deceive. If possible, even the elect, even those that I have called, those that are born again, could also be deceived, the elect. So we need to be careful. You should develop your spirit man to be able to discern. According to 1 John chapter 4, says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. What else will I say? The scriptures have said it all. Many false prophets have gone out. First John 4. They have gone out. They are all over into the world. Be careful. Note. Another thing that we see as I conclude. Please as a sister. Don't allow any man that is not your husband to bat you said he is doing spiritual bats for you it is wrong no man should see your nakedness he said he is batting you another common thing you see you see a pastor will tell you he wants to wash your private parts inside church asking you for your underwear asking you to barber your to 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 barb your private hair and bring for him these are all practices that are unfounded. They are not scriptural. They are not biblical. But we see them. They are happening today in our generation, in our times. And people in, are falling victims of it. We will tell you, oh, shave your private hair and bring for me. And then you are shaving and going to give. Think now. Use your brain. And then you shave it and go and give. For what? Which part of the Bible is it found? He tells you, I have to wash your, your private parts so that you will get husband. And then you accept that. It is not scriptural. It is not scriptural. So please, if you are following victims of some of these points I've mentioned already, it's really, really so unfortunate that you are following victim already. But please be wise. Love your Bible. Read your Bible. When you read your Bible and somebody tells you something or wants to carry out something on you that is strange that you don't understand, you quickly say, no, you have the right to object, to say, no, I don't want this. I don't want it. You have the right. If you close your mouth, it means you are accepting it. Please and please let us be careful. And I pray that the Lord will release upon you his grace his spirit to be able to discern in this end time in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please do well to share this video, to be a blessing, to deliver someone, to rescue someone from 
falling into some of these vices I've mentioned that we see displayed in this end time. And as you do, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. See you in our next video. God bless you.